I'll start sharing my screen and we'll get going. I don't know. I'm surprised. You know, I always have the question or the always there's always the question of whether or not do you record it? Because, you know, I had I had the CSC class or whatever and I had like a review session and no one showed up to the review session. And then everyone was asking me where the uh, the, pra- the, the an- answer key was yeah. and the recording was. And I'm going, I'm like, OK, because it was like the practice test or whatever. And they wanted the answer key. Do that. And everybody do that. and then I had post. So then everyone had asked it. So I p- went on the Piazza and I posted an answer key that said nobody showed up to the uh, to the review yeah. session. If you all want an answer key. You better come to this one and that was the biggest review session i've ever had on a discord I server know. literally wow. everybody showed up it was kind of funny it was kind of funny but it worked and that was the last test that we have to worry about uh so at least for a little bit we so final but yeah nope. up in two weeks yeah is that a different class no yeah it's a different class than this CSD. Yes. Oh, okay okay it's for uh we're in the same CSC mm. class. Actually, a lot of people are in the same class. It's literally just a class of like 500 people because, you know, who cares about Rough. online classes? Yeah. Rough. Okay. More online class. Okay. Yeah. Let's start. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> uh, welcome to the last test uh, crap of ECE 209. Uh, I'll be your host, Depressed J, and uh, today we're going to be going over uh, depression in the form of ECU 209. Um, okay, so uh, the goal of the day is to go through the the I guess the what's going what he thinks is going to, or what he thinks he put on the quiz for us in this little sheet, and then we'll go over the practice quiz and kind of explain and answer any questions that we have. And then um, tomorrow we cry on the test. So, starting off, um, given a description, which I might as well open um, C line, and I can do a little bit of practice programming. But um, let's put this over here for the time being, and I will make a new project real quick so that we can code things in here as needed. make a new C line project. We'll call this Depresso Expresso. Make okay. sure to put a pointer to depression. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So I've got something over here so that way we can uh, we'll use that in a sec. Okay, so given a description of the data you need, declare a struct type that represents the data. So to declare a struct, I think you just go to town you create a name for it. I think you have to do a type def, don't you? Uh, you don't have to you don't, if, if you don't want to name if it. If it just says declare struct, you don't have to do type def. Yeah, he just said that uh, Zybooks did it on their own, but he said that we didn't really have to. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was trying to... Okay, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, so struct, we're going to make um, depression. I think, I think that's the, kind of the vibe that we're getting from today. So a struct of depression. Now, what is included in depression? Um, let's do an int of how many days you cried. How many days you cried? Because we're just really gonna take this analogy to the to the end here. Um, what other what other important things do we want to include in our depression? Um, any anybody else have any ideas? Like you know, do we think in its uh, int number of credit hours you're taking? Oh, okay, okay, yeah. credit hours. That's that's a direct hey, core. Okay, credit hours. Thank you. Correlation. Direct correlation there. Oh, uh, uh, hours worked. Slept. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, we'll do worked slept. and hours worked, and we'll do um, hours, slept. hours slept. And hours slept, we'll make it a double because uh, you know, well, actually, you could you could do a lot of thing here. Okay, so hours slept. Uh, yeah, you could do that too, or you could just do like a minute in minutes to, or you know, it's okay. Or we can make another struct, even a struct, a uh, struct, a uh, time. And we have uh, int minutes, int hours. Well, I should probably do hours first, but you know what? It's all good. So there we go, int hours. And we have, uh, we can make, we can declare uh, basically time, I think time t, right? Or is it? No, how would we? Fuzzy for anybody else? Oh, is it total fuzzy? You do struct time. Time okay, hold up. Let me see. Is the text text fuzzy? Because I can make it bigger for y'all. It is. Yeah, it's more yeah. fuzzy. 
Okay, I'm trying to figure out. I don't know why this. Did anyone know a keybind for this, or can I make this? Uh, control probably control flat. flat. I've done that. That's what I was my first instinct. Okay. Let me, tr maybe Let me see if I can figure it out. Uh, uh, view, view appearance. How many EC students does it take to zoom in? I don't know. Yeah, that's well, a good question. Um, they don't make it easy to do it. Is part of the issue. Okay, time for Google, everybody. This is what Google's for. Um, how to zoom uh, C line. There we go. That's what Google's for. Oh, Control Alt S. Hold up. That's that's Con safe. Control Mouse Wheel Option. That's 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 not. Hell no. What? What is no, this crap? Right. Um. Yeah, that's not C line. Command, yeah, I've already tried that. Uh, why, why is this telling me stuff that's not working? Okay. Okay, I'll tell you what we can do. I can. Um, Roger Bird must have wrote those. Okay, let's do. How many EC students does it take? I agree. Um, <laughs> if see. you do um, view and open presentation mode, it pulls everything out and makes it a little bit bigger. Zoom in. That could work. No, that doesn't work. Okay, so file, what were you saying now? Uh, view, mm -hmm. uh, appearance, and then open presentation mode. Oh, presentation it, mode makes top. it huge. Yeah. yeah. Okay, there that works. Go. Can you guys see? Ooh, all right. Okay. okay. Presentation so, mode. But, here's a quick question. So with structs, they should always be outside of the main function? Yes. I don't know. This is, okay, this is You're like function definition. And then, yeah, you put yeah. them in their own thing. I, I, don't think I figured I'd it. ask just because I know in LC, I know when he broke it down for LC3, it appears outside of it. I just wanted to confirm that is actually how it needs to be. Yeah, it is. Okay, what other, what should we make our... What and should, note that uh, there's always a semicolon at the end of a struct. Outside the braces. What am I doing wrong here? Why this is incomplete type struct? Did I not? I? Um, I think you have to declare it before. That's probably makes sense. Yeah, that's probably what I would say. Yeah, so consecutive. There we go. Okay, so nice. then you can access this in your your void statement here. So you can do like uh, time. Well, I should probably name this a little bit something. Yeah, so the time worked. Well, I should probably declare the struct too. Depression dot no. Okay. Struct. I got instantiated, I forgot. Struct temp equals oh, struct uh, time Oh, depression. We'll make depression. Temp. And then we can basically add stuff. So like uh, temp dot uh, credit hours. Or we can make time. Let's do time. Worked dot hours equals two. So that's kind of accessing. That's a quick example of creating a struct with multiple structs inside of it and then accessing the stuff that's in there. What's up? Uh, and now we can Google. do an array of depression structs. I'm going to be Wait, into so this for a bit. I'm sorry. In, uh, like calling a struct from within a struct rather than just calling time. So say that again, sorry. Uh, what, what's the what's the point in calling like from within like a struct within a struct rather than just calling what, hours you from could time? you could call it too but um like for example if you wanted to make like a I don't know a car like I don't know just like a think of it it's more for inner like doing more complex objects or more complex you need to make more complex things because think about it like you wouldn't if you want to talk about depression you wouldn't talk about the the t time time's kind of abstract in comparison but when you put time in the in the context of depression then you can explain that you know <laughs> how many how many hours is is relating to that depression all that stuff okay okay um going back to our lovely little document here right c code 
that uses struct and or pointers. This includes references to struct fields and arrow operators um, using function call struct values and struct pointers. Okay. So from what I understand, the difference between, and I had to do some, some searching up for this. So the difference between like a struct dot field and struct field is that the, and I'm going to do another line here. This is for direct access or non pointer. I'll just make this non pointer because that'll be easier. Non pointer. And this is a pointer. So if you wanted to access something that was in a struct that was a pointer field, then like instead of doing, I'm trying to think, like how, how, how would be the best way to describe this? Um, I don't know, maybe make a pointer in here. If we're trying to print like a, like a string that's within string our struct. Stuff? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so string within a struct. Because you don't want the actual value of that first spot mm -hmm. uh, pointer to the, sh the string, right? Mm, yeah. Okay. And I think that's pretty explanatory. I mean, we can do some examples. So, like, for example, depression, um, car. I'll make this a uh, text, and we'll make this a text to 10, and uh, we'll call this name. Uh, I should probably, yeah, it's, never mind, it's a term. I should make this a name. And then we'll make this equal to depression. I think, can we instantiate it out of the box or no? Uh, you can't, um, in, yeah, you can, uh, declare, but then yeah, you, you have you, to declare it in the main. Oh, you have to declare. You can't, you can't instantiate it. Instanti instanti instantiate it. Okay. Ooh, I can't speak. <laughs> but, yeah. Name, our name equals actually i don't think you can do that either okay great name you have to string copy which i don't yeah. have that enabled well i don't even have the library in there i don't know what that yeah, line include, include. Uh, string know. dot h okay there we go and this is going to even complain because i'm not using it i don't think because you haven't used it yet <laughs> string copy and then you could have so we have name and depression, I believe. This might be the other way around. Uh, you need um. Oh, it's you, a gotta uh, you depression. need depression dot name. You gotta set up depression before you can do that. Yep. Yep. But you have depression declared below that, so. Yeah, know. but I know, that's what I was thinking. I was more thinking the the, the order there. Okay. Mm -hmm. There we go. Or use temp dot name. Sorry. Temp dot name in your situation. Okay. There you go. And then you would have, and then you could point to the location of the beginning. So like temp dot, what would it be? Name. And that would return mm -hmm. the location of the first pointer to, pointer to uh, top of, uh, top of string character. Correct? It should, from what I Yeah, to can we print it and okay, let's you know, do that. set that equal to like a. Or, yeah. Let's do that. Let's print it. Okay. Um, let's see. Print F. Um, I don't know if we can. I don't know. We'll try it. I don't know how we print a pointer, but. Let's do. Well, when you want to do print F, like percent S, and then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking, but. I... It should read that way. Let's try. As far as I remember. <laughs> and we can tell it to print so many characters, mm. right? Uh, technically... Well, it's wanting to do the, the dot here. Um, um, if you want to use that arrow operator, you have to declare the struct as a pointer. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Struct yeah. Like struct depression yeah. star temp. Yeah, the struct's not a pointer in this situation. 
I think the struct has to be a pointer in order for you to use the arrow. Yeah. And then there we go. And then by just. And then you have to change your dots to. I think that's the only instance. All right. I don't think. I think that's like the use case is if we have a struct declared as like a pointer. Uh, that's when we use the arrow notation. I don't think we can use the arrow notation to. Like if we wanted to return a pointer for. Um, like a struct value, we could do like the whole like star or uh, address notation, like the star or the the and symbol. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, we use the pointer. Uh, we use the arrow if our struct is a pointer to begin with. Okay. Fun stuff. Fun stuff. Um, write C code that uses an array of struct values and an array of struct pointers. I think that's. Wait. I'm sorry, real quick on the last one. What exactly would be the benefit or point of making a struct a pointer? Like, why would you want to do that? I I just don't get pointers. They don't make any sense to me. Mostly oh. memory conservation. But like... Okay, I guess that's fair. If we want to move uh, structs around specifically like within functions, but we don't want to keep copying the same struct to just like different places in memory, we can use pointers to always refer back to the same struct we made. Okay. Um, that's like the use case now to be fair like with computers we have right now we would have absolutely zero issue like creating yeah. hundreds thousands of structs but the idea is we use a pointer to just conserve memory for the most part and also for pointer arithmetic you can do neat stuff okay epic thank you Based. Mm -hmm. basically advanced programming crap or advanced optimization crap yeah, it's more of an optimization technique. Okay, demonstrate an understanding of how struct values are represented in memory for an LC3 processor. No, oh, excuse me if you don't mind real quick. Oh, sorry. Um, I'm good. I'm good. Um, every time I see LC3, I have uh, PTSD. Actually, I have PTSD Dude, I, from this I, semester. but I hate it. I hate converting C code into LC3. Oh, amen, amen, amen. I don't think we have to do that for this quiz, but we do need to know how structs like represent in memory. Uh, well, let me show you that practice quiz that I didn't do too great on. <laughs> <laughs> Seven, the LC3 one, I was going to like post on the piazza about that. Yeah, I don't think that's something we'll have to do because I, I did email him and he's like, you shouldn't have to write LC3 code relating to structs. You should only know how they're how oriented works. in memory. Okay. Thank God. Thank God. Hey, Amen. Yeah. Hold, hold, who said that? Who said that? Who said that? Who said that? That was that was me. Okay. So 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 when uh, when it shows up on the test, I'm uh. If it shows up on the test, you're legally allowed to kill me. Uh, I don't know if I'd go that far. I don't know. You <laughs> might. You might. He admitted it. You admitted it. You you, you might you that's might it. you might get a stiff stare down whenever we get in person though. Uh, uh, oh yeah, that's true. Um. All right, I'll, you'll I'll, be at the uh, end of the table. We'll yeah, he'll be it. at the end of the table. You'll be castrated from hey, the freaking listen, uh, he ECE me. program. I'm just the messenger. Okay, okay, okay. So the, the, the Dr. Bird, if you see it on the test, you know, complain to Dr. Bird. Don't complain. I to feel me. like we should collectively, like, if we see it on the test, we should all just press the submit button and just like. No, we all should unmute. We all should unmute and just curse about. No, <laughs> I don't know if we do that, I but <laughs> I don't think we join the Zoom. We all just with. we all just call him on his work phone. Yo, all at once, <laughs> all at once. Yeah, let's go. Okay. Uh, what was I looking for? I was looking for this practice quiz. Oh yeah, this depression. Yay! This thing. Oh, I saved it, didn't I? I saved it somewhere. I hope so. I did. I remember to save it. Let's see. Practice quiz attempt. Files. Packages. Okay. There we are. Let's see if this is going to work. Uh, okay, this is not... This is I saved the literal HTML file. So, because um, last time, uh, basically, he decided that he was just not going to do it. I don't know if it's going to let me review it. Jay, you can pull it up. Okay, I, I can. I, I, I pulled it up. Okay, 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 okay. I was making... That was that was my backup plan. Good thing we can review it. Okay, good, good, good. You can pull on it today's up. episode of I Didn't Do Too Hot on This, but we're just going to ignore that. Um... Okay, here we are. So, um, consider the struct definitions. See? Voila. Comment code, guys. Totally gonna do something. Um, make sure... Yeah, something like this shouldn't be on the test, according to what Dr. Bird said. Okay, so I think what we need to understand, however, is, um, just how it, like... like what those look like. What that looks <laughs> like in memory. Mm -hmm. That should how be much something like that on Zybux. 
Like, oh, is there? I, I think so. Like, he put all those iBooks, uh, like, sections in the, the topic sheet. I mean, we could oh, just sift through those and see. Yeah. It's iBooks 7 point? Okay. The structs are just essentially, like, ends, doubles, and stuff. They're just the size of whatever's in Yeah, the, I think so, but... Declared, right? So, yeah. in ours, it would be... Just uh, making a couple lines of code here. Don't mind me. And then, like... 9.1 has... Okay. Is I a thing? picture of how it is. Let's do that. That's stored. much better than me doing it out in ASCII t text. Uh, 9.1. Let's get that up in a sec. I cannot wait for this semester. Are y'all down? Like, when we get... I don't know how many of y'all are near Raleigh because I was gonna say when we get out of the pandemic or when we get done with summer, I'd be down to like have a meetup or whatever. But I'm in Raleigh. Bet. I'm in Raleigh. Okay, I'm in Raleigh. I'm gonna be in Raleigh. I'm in Garner, but you know it's like 20 minutes away. Y'all fuckers got vaccinated? Yes, I got. Va I'm getting my second yep. shot on uh, Wednesday, on Thursday. I need to schedule it and stuff. But yeah. They were giving out J and J. I got that and had a fever for two days. Oh and yeah. Now they're not giving out oh, anymore. You I got sick from that. I heard. I my uh my I'm getting my second shot on Tuesday, and my younger brother like had a knockout fever, like he was knocked out. Oh, so I'm looking for no, Moderna. he got the Moderna because I'm getting my second Moderna, yeah, well, and uh, yeah. like, apparently it knocks you out. The second shot knocks you out too. So I mean, either way, you're knocked out. So either well, way, you're bad. <laughs> I was gonna wait until the end of exams to get it, so you know, it wasn't fucking me up while I was studying. Yeah, and stuff. that's kind so of like I'm fuck it. Up. Like I just got it the other day. Uh, and I haven't felt anything. Oh, really? Nice. Yeah. So that's like, like, maybe a, a, a little sore shoulder. But, yeah. Did I'm you get the get first the or first second shot? shot? Oh, the first. The first yeah, shot the second shot's is... gonna no. hit. <laughs> the second shot is different. I may go get the first shot, like, now, so I'm not taking the second shot. Yeah. yeah. If, uh, if you... If you haven't gotten it now, just at least wait till the end of the week, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I could schedule it fairly easily, I'm sure. Okay, so... Um, I just walked in and asked if they had any extra. Pandemic, uh, basically, when summer rolls around, we'll do like a... I don't know, I'll try to organize something. I'd be down. I'd be down we'll to get a... Do that'd be cool. I don't, it would not be school-related. probably be like, I don't know, we'll probably go to the park or something. I don't know. What, you would, guys play airport? Oh, dang. You know what? I, I play a lot of volleyball, but I don't know how many of y'all are into that. This is that's, Hey, volleyball's... That's, that volleyball is so much fun. Yeah, I mean, it would. I don't care if like anyone's good or not. It'd just be mad fun to get a bunch of people together and play. That's all. I'd be down to get all all engineers playing volleyball. Yo, that's totally that. like all engineer volleyball that's team. Fun. That'd be so cool. Yeah, let's go. Uh, calculate the trajectory. Uh, Yo, know, yeah, design a electric circuit to uh, send the volleyball or design a oh, cannon. Yeah, no, oh, yeah, yeah. No, it's too much work. <laughs> a volleyball cannon. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool. Not gonna lie. Okay. Anyway, continuing on. Um, so this is kind of what it looks like. I think they just, it basically uses the first, yeah, it basically just looks like it goes down the list and stores it. As an instantaneous, instantaneous, whatever. So it just stores yeah. it in memory at the first option. Yeah. Pretty much it, it just. just the out. definition of the struct itself doesn't take up space in memory, right? It's only like if you um, declare one after. It's afterward. only if it's declared. And yeah. Instantaneous. It's instantiated. Instantiated. Whatever. Instantiated here, <laughs> and once it's in, and once it's instantiated, it just take the values uh, included in the struct to take up space, not the name of the struct or not the. Yeah. Wait, top can you to zoom in a little bit? Yeah, I got you. Let me know. Yeah, the 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 there so this one is just declaring the struct multiple times with different names. Yeah, it's just and declaring. So it's like the yep. Yep. Three different times. Yep. 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 Yeah. So see, this is what's not necessarily in memory, but it's referring to a certain space. It's kind of like the pointers that we are not the pointers, but the text that we'd use in LC3 to point to something. It's like it's there for us, but not for. It's not going to show up. In so the, the amount of uh, local registers that we would use mm -hmm. up in our code that we just made earlier would be like seven, seven words. Um, the amount of like space in memory, not registers, because registers we'd still have that stacks or whatever on it. Yeah, you stand. Yeah, yeah, the space of memory. Yeah, yeah, space of memory. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. So then. What's the, which? What's uh, ch uh chapter was that? Let me write that down. This is nine point one. one. All right, good stuff. Let me write that down so I can refer to that later. Yeah, nine point one is structures. That'll okay. be helpful. I'm worried about like um. Uh, kind of like the stuff that he's going to make us do, like the uh, the logic of what he's going to make us do with the stuff, mm -hmm. you know, with structs and 
if the yeah. model loops kind of like the the practice quiz like that was pretty difficult like it took me a lot longer than like an hour to figure out some of that stuff okay so um type def i'm, I'm gonna try speeding this up because i got somewhere to be at probably like 2 30 2 15 so i, I gotta uh, it's actually volleyball for that too so uh anyway continuing on um let's see so we want to do type def now let's do type def so i think type def oh boy that's not type def type def allows you to rename the string the uh, structure a structure so type but so if i understand this correctly you name it as something like uh i don't know how would you let's see you type uh, in the name and then you type the name you want to rename it to so depression and then yeah. we want to rename it to struct communism i don't know that's what i'm feeling today i think i think what it is i saw one of them where okay where it renames it on like 19 line 19. Mm -hmm. so like yeah, if we did it for our first the struct depression you would type type def struct depression and then on line 19 it right before the semicolons mm -hmm. you would rename it yeah that's so on a uh, zybooks because what they, they usually do is actually like, type def struct they had like depression then they had like an underscore struct like and then after the practice with you, nothing else just con like yeah, yeah take away the move the type def, def up to the top and it should work that's what they do in zybook a lot before the struct okay so that's one way to do it uh we still got near hold of uh, before the struct yeah it's before the struct like that on the on 12 in on line 12 it should line. be type def struct depression okay and i don't think you need to write struct communism i think you can right. just write communism just communism yeah that just changes the name to communism now we can refer to it yep now you don't have to declare a struct depression. You can declare a, a communism. <laughs> yep. <laughs> or you can just change this to sadness. It makes more sense. <laughs> yeah. We'll be sad together. Okay. And then. Wing. Um. Right code that uses the. Okay, hold on. Let me make sure I'm doing this right. Uh, type def write C code that declares performs operations on string data. This may be implementing one of the standard string library functions without relying on any of the other string library functions. So we already did string copy down here, which basically just copies um, one array of characters to another array of characters. Um, write C code that safely reads string data from standard input and reads string data to standard output. So I think I do want to, one of the things, even if it's not covered on here, I want to do file accessing. So file access before we just make, yeah. sure, make sure I don't forget that. I'm going to put a note down here. Um, I know file access, um, like the F open, all that stuff I need some help with. So I just want to make sure that we get to that today too. Um, write C code that uses the string.h library. Um, you're responsible for the following functions that are listed in the C reference sheets. So here we go. We'll just go through the list here. I'm going to actually work on doing them on here. So string length. Um, I believe this gets you the length of characters in a... I'm trying to find the string here. So temp.name. And that should be returns the number of characters in the name char array. Mm -hmm. You've got string copy, which we've already used, which I'll just uh, copies one um, array to another. You've got strn copy, which I'm not familiar with that does. It copies a, an n amount of characters. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's a number copy. Okay, so... Yeah, so it's like a uh, string copy, except for there's one more parameter. So you have the the pointer to the array, and then you have your string or another array. And then you do another comma and the number of characters you want to copy over. I've got a quick question. So, like, when do you use the, like, arrow thingy, or, like, what is that for? Oh, so so the arrow thing is um, basically we had already kind of discussed this um, a little bit about how 
the the period is used when you're referring to a structure that is not or a struct that you have not defined as a like a pointer and that when you're when you define it as a pointer that is when you just um when you use the arrow notation so if this if i were to move this this arrow right here then everything would be would go to um i have to change a lot of these all these arrows to dots this pointer basically just means that you have to have arrows oh gotcha thanks What's that error on line 30 for temp? 30, the error on line 20. So we've declared temp here. The arrow here, you mean? Uh, temp is highlighted. Um, if you hover over it, it'll show like there's a syntax error or something. It's uninitialized. Oh, that's because it's not a... It, it, I should initialize it probably with have it like default. Uh, I should probably have default values in here. I think can you No you can't um No you can't you can't do that. Yeah you can't. You have to you just have to initialize them um like down where you first initialize the depression or temp. You'll have to give it values there. It's just because you didn't put values in both of them, I'm pretty sure. I yeah, I think so. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Because mm -hmm. it's not actually gotcha. a mission okay. critical error. It's just a warning. It's just a warning that you haven't used all of temp's mm -hmm. variables. Okay, um, and string CMP. Oh, CMP, sorry. What is that? Player. String what? compare. It oh, compares compare. It string. compares the two. Let's see if they're, yeah. see as if they're equal. They also, like, return yeah. certain, like, a negative or a positive, depending on, like, yeah. how, how, which, what order they're in, like, alphanumerically. Mm -hmm. um, I can't remember which is which. Like, I think it, I don't remember, um, like, what it I means if it returns either. negative. But you should always assume it'll either return a negative or a positive number, or I think, or, or zero. One. Or, or one. Or I thought it was zero. Is it, oh, it's zero, yeah. Zero if it's equal, positive if it's... It's like, if yeah, the it's first positive is if greater one or yeah. something. I don't remember. Um, I think it's the first and second. I don't know. Return but zero if equal. Yeah. Never assume, like, a negative one or positive one. Always assume, like, a positive number or a negative number. Uh, that's one thing yeah. he wanted us to make sure about. Because depending on the, the language, platform. it does mm -hmm. different things. Right, I'm just putting some notes down. Don't mind me. So that whenever um, will will this kind of like pseudocode also be uploaded? Like when you do yes, the, I will yep. post this gotcha. to the Discord server so that you guys can have access to this. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Um, Thanks. A string concat cat I would assume is concatenate that takes two strings and puts them together and returns a yeah okay. adds the second yep. screen string to the first string. Oh, and uh, I noticed this doesn't work if uh, your first string or second string or your first string doesn't have a null character because it concatenates based on the null characters. Oh, that makes sense though. Yeah. Good point. Okay. So it so for my so just making sure I understand this correctly the the. This adds the text at the end of it. Yeah, so it finds the null character in the first one, and then it adds the text, replacing the null character, and then uh, it just rewrites the whole thing. Would that, that put it? Would it puts the, Does it put the result into temp name? Yes. And that would okay. of course assume that temp name had enough spaces to do that as well. Um, I think it just writes it until like so like if it doesn't have enough space, it'll. Mm -hmm just write text uh -huh. and then it will leave cut off uh, no null character. yeah it won't have a null character okay and isn't strn just you just have to specify how many characters yep and yeah. so yeah. in our in our copy in our line 34 it'll just uh copy over s a d n okay and then we got string uh char which is that just get a return a character at a given specific that returns the, the pointer to a character in a given string like the first instance of uh, a character that you give it in a string of that character yeah mm -hmm. returns returns pointer to first instance of a given character and so I will change this to T because it would make a little bit more sense there. And then that one just returns zero. It would, yeah. Uh, well, not zero. 
No, no, because it would should return like the memory address, right? Oh, like, whatever the hell that is. Yeah, the memory and if returns. you do S S T R R C H R, is uh, it's gonna look from the right to the left. Mm -hmm. So it'll return the last T. Uh, you should also put in your notes like if that character isn't in that string, then it just returns a null character. Good oh, point. that's true. It does. Yeah. All right, let's do that. Make sure I put that in there, and then. All right, is all of this? Are these like? Is this info in our C reference sheet at all? Like any of these? Uh, uh, if numbers? I were to take a bet, no. This class is shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go look. Fair enough. I'm looking. If anything, it just has like. A couple of these. It has some. It has str. Okay, str len, str copy, str n copy. It doesn't really. It doesn't go in as much detail as like we are though. Does it say any like the actual? I don't it's not know. useful. It's they're really terrible. Then I don't ever look at it because they're. It's a terrible sheet. At I least think like there. maybe if you want to download like one that we used um in the problem session, like there was one that like had a bunch of different uh function like library functions, but. I don't think we'd provide a one for the exam. That's kind of actually useful. Yeah. Okay, so I have a question about some... Um, so the next thing we have to go over is we're on 10 right now in the review sheet. Um, I just want to ask some questions about like some arrays and get some clarification. So when we make... A, we'll just say this is some text. Um, you have two... If you were to do a double, I don't know, just say like 10, 10, just to make it easy. And you were to define that. What's the difference between this and let's do text 10. I think that, can I do that? I'm trying to make sure. Or my. It's the same name, so it won't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Text. Other text. There you go. That's why. So this is so the yeah the top one's an array of like array of character arrays they're just like an array of strings like the, like the string literals are are in that array mm -hmm. whereas the the second one is just an array of pointers to strings yeah. and in the top one like in text that's that's ten strings with a maximum of ten characters each that one's actually not strings that one's a integer array of of arrays. So it's kind of like linear algebra where you have, you know, what? the arrays of stuff. That one's an array of, right? Of well, characters. It's a car, yeah, it's car array. array so like, of characters. It is technically integers, but the, we're, it's it's formatted to the, the car. So. The car format, yeah. Technically is int. Cause all technically, are... this is just all binary. Like, come on, guys. Um, and you can binary. use, like, like, if you did text bracket one, that would return like the in, that would that's basically like the entire first string. Mm -hmm. So like you could use, um, you could use text bracket one in like string uh, functions. Uh, that's how I did some of the stuff in the last program we had. Text bracket zero. Not and one. also yeah, t so yeah, as an example, but text bracket zero would also work. Yeah. Okay. Because zero would be the entire. String. Okay. I'm um, given a statement that includes scan f uh, f scan f call. And given the stream of characters on the input stream, describe what happens, what values are stored, and what is the return value. So f scan f, if I remember correctly, returns scan f. And I think I just gotta make like an int real quick, or I'll make a int temp or a store equals negative one, and then make f scan one store. I don't know what's. Let's do that. And I'll just make it a D. Like that. Uh, F scan F also has to have the file name at the beginning as well. Right, this is for files. It's oh, file, file scans. File yeah. name, format, and then variable. Scan. Oh, okay. This is getting into the file stuff. I'll say that later. I, I, I'm getting confused. Scan. I'm getting confused with scan F. Sorry. That makes sense. Yeah. We'll get we'll Scanner. get to we'll get to files next. I promise we'll get to files at the end. I'm just trying to because we got one more line of things. Um, so yeah. write a C code that opens the file, text for reading and writing, and then write C code that reads specified I/O from an I/O stream, which is basically just files. Um, okay, so now we can do files. So real quick, 
I am going to copy this to the Discord server real quick so that you guys can have this before we get to the file stuff. I don't know if Discord's going to let me do that, but I will pin that. Well, I think we'll still need file stuff. I know, I know. I'm I am just trying to make sure that that's because I don't know if I want to delete this all to actually get something to run because we're going to probably need a little okay. bit more. A little bit more. Um, uh, I might need to debug this. Okay. So going through... One of the... Go ahead. I, I don't mean to interrupt, but like one of the one of the practice prob practice quiz problems had like some good examples of like uh, reading from a file and also writing to a file. We can look at that code if we want to reference. Okay. Um, it was whichever one that had us <laughs> doing reading and writing. Yeah, I'm looking for it. So here it is. We can just kind of go over it before we get started on writing our own thing because I think <laughs> writing our own thing would be good. Um, so first off, to explain what's going on here, you're opening, uh, you're creating a file type with a reference to the location input.txt. This is within the same folder. So if you were to go through and like, I don't know, if you were to make a new folder real quick, I don't know, just make something, a local disk here. Make a new folder. I'll delete this later. This is like everything that your program would be sitting in here. And anytime you made like a new text file, this would be kind of example... We'll just call this input one, input dot text, and then when you have, basically your program would look at be in, sitting in here your like program file and it would see this, and then if it wanted to write the numbers dot text, and it didn't find one, it would create a new file. So that's what f open does is if 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 it's in the right mode, it will create a new file. So just kind of going over that, delete that new folder. Don't delete my uh, program files. Though. That'd be kind of <laughs> stupid. Oh, it's system 32, guys. Oops. Um, so basically what this is doing is just instantiating a couple different values. And then while true, which is basically an infinite loop here. Isn't this true? While while 1, which is infinite loop. Does yeah, he have... Yeah, while means that it's means, infinite. That means true. While true. That's what I thought. Um, and he has a break in here. I was trying to figure out how he gets out of this loop. Okay, so status, which is an int is f scan and basically that saying is as long as that this this is possible and that it scans something i believe f scan returns a one as long as it's true or as as long as it returns a value yeah, yeah it returns a value i thought it won but okay um if status equals end of file which is the abbreviation for the the thing then break so if it's at the end and then if status equals zero it didn't read an integer um so then read another uh, word to get past it and then else it prints it to the output it prints to the price of the file so status it returns a zero if it's an integer and returns something it returns else. zero if it's an so, character so, if, so, if it's like, so think yeah. about it like um, this is just basically taking the input from the fscanf function so, so it, it either returns oh, okay. it's scanning for a percent d so it's scanning for an integer so basically yeah. what yeah this is so if it, yeah. i'm trying to think this the input the num so it's basically reading in the number so it's taking the number here it's reading in the number if it can't read a number it's either an end of file in which it leaves the loop and jumps down to here or it's a zero, which means that it's not a number. And then therefore it will skip over that and read the next next one. It looks like it's reading the INP, the input, and then copying that to the number. Yes. It's it's copying okay. from this file, which in this case is input.txt. It's going through here slowly. And then when it is a number, it is going to write it out here. So it's going to... It's going to write it to numbers. .txt. Number text. yep. And because it's in the it right mode. It's going to write it to the output, F, print F. Okay. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it, um, like, in the event that input.txt or numbers.txt didn't exist in our directory, wouldn't those return, like, null? Or, like, in so in the, case, in the case of out P, I believe if it's anything like C sharp, it does, it makes the file if it's in write mode, if it doesn't exist, whereas in the read mode, I believe it spits out an error. Okay. We can check that, that in a sec. We can check that, that up. Yeah. Let's check that. Let's I'll look it up while we're... Okay. Any other questions before we start writing a little bit of code and then finishing up? So our, our 
in the like the input.txt that line that's the, that's just read mode that stands for read, read and then write. write so what we were what i was okay. saying earlier is that when it's in write mode i believe it creates another file it creates the file and yes according to uh, c library uh, documentation a w will create an empty file if a one does not already exist but if one with the same name does already exist its content is erased and it, the file is it considered as like an empty one yeah so basically it recreates yeah. the file or creates the file if it doesn't exist okay yeah and then read i also believe if i'm correct here that um when you access through read it sets a file lock which i don't know if this is going to be or any bit important but that basically means i don't think you can have two um reads to the same file because you you can't read the same file twice at the same time. You can't read it at the same time, which I guess is, keep that in mind, is just file locks. Um, so does anyone else have any other questions on this? Um, so just just commenting, the reason we, so I'm looking at what fscanf does. So in right beneath while one, um, fscanf, according to this documentation, returns an integer for how many things it was able to scan like given that we're looking for a decimal, right? It returns zero if, you know, it scanned zero integers. That's why we're checking if it returns a zero, mm -hmm. but it'll return like a one or anything else if it was able to scan like one integer or two mm -hmm. integers. So it returns okay. the number of things that it was able to read. So okay. will scan it automatically increments itself through the file? Mm, it, it yes. Moves File, yeah. yeah. So every time you call it, it basically moves over. It it scans a new part of the text. Mm -hmm. Goes into like a space or a or like a like an empty yep. character. Or if it finds like a uh, a number in this case, right? Well, if yeah. it finds a number, then it will store it in the the uh, num num, and then uh, and then it returns how many. So I have a question. Digits? Where is I word return? used? Um, it's reused. When to get past like when it doesn't read an integer if like status eight. equals equals zero it uses the word mm -hmm. it basically it just reads the word the string mm -hmm. into the word just so it can get past the string okay so yeah it reads okay okay okay, okay. So it can move the so that reads 10 characters yeah okay as long as they're um characters yep mm -hmm. uh, i have a question uh what does eo if does eof stands EOF? for yeah what does it what end does it of do? file it basically is think of it like you know you have your string that has if i were to go back into c line real quick you know you have your string that has for example s uh, you know s a d and then you have this null character at the that's a new line it's a carriage return but uh null that null character at the end of it like if those were if i were to do this differently make this like an array of text you're familiar with that being what in a, a, a string yeah, is yeah, composed yeah. of. So you have that null character at the end of it, which basically tells you that you're at the end of a string. Well, the same oh, okay. the same thing goes for uh, like a text file. Because remember you have like, I don't know, I'm going to do this a little bit differently. So this t text, this, I don't know if I can type today, is some... some text and then at the end of the line it has the EU EOF character at the end of it somewhere and uh, that's really rudimentary but that's kind of explaining at least kind oh, of okay. kind of in a rough idea of that it's it's an abbreviation for a character that we can't physically like see yeah 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 gotcha all right thank you Okay, any other questions, you Okay. Uh, then do we want to kind of write some code real quick? And then we can hopefully in like five minutes or six minutes and I can be out of here. And then we can... You know, try like reading and writing from a file. Okay, sure. Let's let's do, let's do some reading and some writing from a file. So I believe... I don't know. I might have to view out, hop out of here somewhere. Okay, I don't even know where this, this file is. Let's see. Edit... Um, C line for me stored it in like app data roaming C line projects, but I don't know if you changed it. Yeah, that let's see. This is C line projects, which I'm trying to figure out where that is because I have this is actually my um my editing computer, so I gotta figure out where the heck this is. 
stored. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, this is going to be fun. Okay, I might just have to escape out of this real quick. And uh, see, file. Okay, I just try opening. Okay, this is going to be a fun experiment. Welcome to technical difficulties. Let's see. Probably in settings, right? Somewhere. Okay. Because usually it's on the tab here. Okay, let me just change the view back to out of presentation mode and then I can find it. Exit presentation mode and then I can go into projects. Open file. Open in Explorer. Okay. So here we are. This makes a little bit of sense and I'll go back to the presentation mode. Okay. Presentation mode. Okay. So Depresso Expresso. Right here. I don't know if you guys can see this. I apologize. It's kind of small. Make it a little bit larger for y'all. So this is the file. <laughs> I don't think uh, the text got any larger. I think just the icons got bigger. I apologize. <laughs> um, so basically, let me undo that. So we're gonna make a text file. I believe this is the right place, right? This is the, actually I should probably make sure that the, go back to view and make sure my appearance. Uh, it doesn't really matter where you put the file as long as you set your directory. That's what I'm gonna make sure that I do next. So working directory, make sure that we set that to, um, well, Depresso Expresso, and we'll make it just to that main folder. So basically, as you can see here, we're making the, the folder, go back to Depresso Expresso, main folder here so that's what we're in and so that when we make a new text file we'll call this input dot text it's in here so it's in this it's well I don't I don't know why oh it's a folder but you see what I'm saying it, input dot text shows up and input dot text shows up and so when we actually make a text file it's visible so I'm gonna click I know it's not a text file but just so you can see it and so there the working directory set and I'll go back to view and do a presentation mode. Okay, so going back to our Depresso Expresso, let's make a new text file. And we're gonna call this input.text, which uh, I can't do now. Adios, you're getting out of here. Um, input.text now. And so that is something that we can now access in our folder. So. Um, I'm going to clear, I already posted the code in the pin message for ECE, so I'm just going to clear this out so we can get something to run here real quick. So it's a little bit more easier for us to kind of see and uh, focus on. So now that we're cleaning this out, and I, as I said, I posted this already in the general chat, um, we want to create a file of type um, input, and that equals f open. I believe you put the file name, which in the case is input.txt and we want to read if i remember is it is it a string read i believe or is it a character read mode i think that's right and then file output and equals f open file name we're going to call this output.txt and we're going to do um write mode so as you can see here, just to go to the picture, picture in the directory, we have the input text, which is what we're doing right here. And then the output doesn't exist currently. Does everyone go with that so far? Okay. Yeah, yep. Okay. Yeah. So then we want to go through and actually start with this, start writing to this. So um, I forget, what is the, make sure I pull up the, so I know what I'm doing, at least a rough idea of what I'm doing here. So next up, we have a couple of different things. I don't know. Should we? I think we should probably just open this, like just run this right now. And then that way we can see what that does basically from... Actually, I probably should set it to close the files. So that way it's not... Um, so F close input and then F close output. So basically all I'm doing is... I am opening the files in the program and then I am closing them immediately afterwards. As you can see, there is no output text so far. So when I edit the view and I go back to exit presentation mode and I run this, which let me see if I can keep this open. I'm gonna do this real quick. So when I run this, 
it should in theory I think I can run this I don't have oh great really I don't have this set up <sighs> what the heck why is, why is my executable not in here <sighs> yeah I am this is gonna be up a creek then okay I had this problem with the with the practice or the program two or whatever, and I couldn't. It was such a pain in the ass. Um, yeah, I don't. Really. I thought I had this. This is okay. You know what? I don't think this is gonna to work on here. I'm sorry. I'm just gonna have to take. But me. in in general, like um, so if that did run, <laughs> it would just create another file that says I think it says like output.txt. So it would create another file that mm -hmm. in that folder. Yeah, it would create. Basically, what would happen is it would just create a text document here that would be output.txt, and then it right. would and then. That's what it would look like when it ran. I apologize. I, I'm sorry about that. I'm good. As long as we get the gist of it. I no, I gotta now. I gotta figure that out before program three, which is not gonna be fun. So that's more of my, my issue there. Um. Okay. So. So anyway, continuing on, what the next thing that we're gonna do here is basically this is where you do your accessing for the file. So you want to have, um. So f scan f which would take your input file and you would have the what you're looking to s read so in this case we'd want um, well, I don't know we'll say some text because I think we'll be looking for more text but you can do and the practice program was a character um, and then you want to input in where you want to store that character um, so for for me I'm gonna say that we're gonna store we'll make a character and this is store um, input character red and that's a really long variable but you know what I like tab autocomplete um, so what this is going to do is it's going to read in the at the so if we were to go back to that folder here go back to that so input dot text if we were just to make a nice big text document here and we were to go through and say like I don't know this is some very normal text about my ECE 209 depression. Perfectly normal bit of text that you have in a text folder on your computer. Um, and then you just, basically what happened is the first thing it would read, at least if this line executed, is it would read this T and store it in the store input character red. And it wouldn't do anything after that. And then if you were to make this into a loop, then it would kind of basically read all of these but it still wouldn't do anything so the next thing we want to do is make it right so f print f and this takes the you want to put in the file that you're working on what you want the format in which you want to output it so if we wanted to be scandalous today we could do something like uh xd i think this is possible and this would print it in the form of like the, the ascii number rather than the um the actual character so it would take like zero being the null character etc so you'd have that offset and everything but you understand at least what's going on there so what this would happen if we were to go back to our text document here is um, this would be like this would read the T it would say and then this would read it from this file and then we'll just say that magically above this line is the other file then it would read like the number in for whatever that is for the ASCII character. I forget what T is in the, it's like I think 48 or something, but probably like what, 57 something. But anyway, and then it would just, as it moved along, it would print out. Well, actually it wouldn't move along at the moment, but, um, and then let's do a, uh, yeah, let's do a, so while, while scan F, does not equal um, EOF this is another way to do it then this is this will print this will execute 
through the thing and basically that's kind of that's a that will run through the loop and execute through the file and read through everything and then print out a bunch of numbers of like the ascii characters so my favorite number and stuff like that there we go stuff like that any questions with that i think that's a pretty simple file accessing things like that Anything that anybody else wants to add? Because I think that covers all the boxes. I think it's good. Uh, can you put that in the Discord chat as well? Yep. I'll post that there and I'll make sure I pin that too for you guys. All right. Well, uh, I think that's really it. Um, I'll probably be on a little bit later, probably around like six or seven tonight. And um, 